How do humans? Welcome to the Rediscover Human podcast. I've lost track of numbers. I didn't even check. Lewis, do you know, is it 15, 16? 16. 16, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're back. We've done two weeks in a row again. Hey, And this time we've got, I say a good friend. We've only met, I only met a few months ago, but in terms of Bristol boys, we've spent some good time together. <clears throat> Max Laheef, ladies and gentlemen. Howdy. Yes. Very, very honoured to be on the cast today, lads. <laughs> I wonder how long it was going to take you to break out the, the voice. Oh yeah, just the away. weird, Chocolate weird voice. characters, yeah. Chocolate <laughs> voice, Max. Straight Straight to work. Work. Great to have you on, man. Um, we've had some great chats. I don't know how much we'll be able to get into <laughs> publicly on a podcast. Oh yeah, the hypotheticals of life. Yeah, there's been some interesting ones. Yeah. Quite funky. Yes. Yeah. So for those that don't know you, you play rugby. Mm. You for... The Bristol Bears? For the Bristol Bears. I play prop, yeah. Good oh. times. Been there about... This is my first season, actually. Yeah. yeah and you moved fun. here from... You didn't, you're not from Bristol, are you? No, I'm from South London, <laughs> but I journeyed from London Irish to Australia. Played in Melbourne for a while, and then I came oh, back. That's fun. Yeah, it was very fun. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> city. I miss it still. But, um, I bet. Needs must, and I had to come back to Bath and um, was reunited with my old coaches from Irish. And mm. I was there for about five years. Mm. And then I find myself here fortuitously. Did you do a stint in France? I did. So what happened there was I was meant to go over to clermont Auvergne, And, um, oh, it's a terrible city, by the way. <laughs> really industrial. Not, not fun. Anyway, I failed the medical. Amazing club. Like, really impressive facility. Like, top of the range. But I failed the medical for my, uh, I've got a funky cervical under the old MRI. It looks fruity looks ominous so to speak as being a prop yeah. and um they were like no absolutely not sacre bleu <laughs> <laughs> that was the words of the radiographer <laughs> anyway. yeah and then um yeah then you i said got, la got that, yeah, la merde. yeah. <laughs> and then um i came back here and i was just in the limbo in yeah. london and um eventually i got i met uh, pat lamb the head coach of bristol and he um he offered me shelter yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And what a weird time to have shelter. Yeah, I know. Now. Yeah. So your first season. So did you play last year before things kicked off? Yeah, yeah. So did, Yeah, just before old um COVID lockdown. Yeah, it was it was it got good. We went, we were third. Yeah, but it was really fun. Yeah. Lovely club. crowds. Crowds. Big, Bristol's got a big fan base. Yeah, right. big fan base. Ashton Gate, full houses. Oh. Yeah. Barbaric, yeah, gladiatorial. <laughs> And then along came this little uh, a guy apparently ate a bat in China. So yeah, <laughs> and, oh, and now you got there people go. watching a rugby game in England. Don't take me into this territory, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> oh, um, and we were just on the verge of getting the crowds back yeah, as well. Just just about to happen. Then they were like, no. And then Boris was like, on oh, that thing, go to work. Don't go to work. Yeah, six start months working. More. Take the train. Don't take the train. Eat with your friends, don't eat with your friends. Yeah, it's Unless your this, fault. Yeah. You ate with your friends. Yeah, you told us like, to eat with yeah. our friends. I, mate, it's mad, isn't it? It's, oh. Yeah, they're just it's playing just confusing. with us. Well, they're, they're, that's what they want. They want distraction, they want confusion. Yeah. But yeah, we, we don't have to. But in terms of affecting sport, that's been so interesting to watch. Like, are you... Because you were, you were saying that um, Harry will do full contact training and then they'll have to sit in a room two metres apart. Yeah. Yeah. Is yours the same as that? Is it yeah, so like you've had to wear these um, GPS vests and they sort of measure GPS your... GPS vests? They're tracking yeah, so they, you? They, they track, they literally Because of COVID you. or just... So they general. track like the GPS is how close they are together over time. So if you're, if you're, if they're within the kind of radius of transmission for over 15 minutes... Yeah, and they'll let you know. Does, does this virus just like hunt with a stopwatch? About, yeah. Is it mate, just uh, look. <laughs> 15 minutes, mate, you're going to jump over uh, to you? I'm just, this is their no, world. I'm yeah, just yeah. living in it. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? no. I'm not asking yeah, your opinion. I'm just yeah. checking. That's um, what they're saying. Mate, it's very strange. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? Yeah. Yeah, there's like, and then there's dividers and like urinals and all that. It's just strange. Like mm. apparently the virus can't jump that far. I don't know. That's just etiquette though and urinals, right? There's like a yeah. certain... <laughs> <laughs> no, but they block out one. They block out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been training the gym with masks on as well. Yeah, there. gym in the with gym with masks. Which, I mean, you've got quite a bane look going on. Yeah, which you don't seem yeah to mind. it's okay. We just yeah. Yeah. Ah, you big dog. Yeah, so you can like get <laughs> fully into it, but it's not great. It's not quite. Um, yeah, it's very strange. Like mm. empty stadiums and stuff. Um, yeah. 
It's been hard on the rugby clubs, right, financially. Yeah, and now there's like, there's some funky stuff happening there. I've been reading about like, uh, what's that guy called? In the House of Commons, he came out talking about pro sport and like the, how the funding's going to work and stuff. And it's all looking... Funding sport, no, they can't. Like, no, something weird's about to happen. Yeah, no, it doesn't look great, bro. Yeah. Not to dick on sport, but that's the last thing that they should be like supporting like with financial. Yeah, no, if it's not I mean? too big to die, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like know that's, that's got yeah. a go, like, if, because, yeah, like football players that get ridiculous salaries. Okay, so if, you know, stadiums aren't filled, then they just got to take a, a pay cut. Like, and I know it's harsh. They've signed up for a certain amount of thing, but it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, how have they played it with Bristol? Because I know some of the rugby clubs have so, players have dropped to like seventy five percent or eighty oh, percent. Oh, they actually done that. To yeah. Me. yeah, shoot, man. Yeah, so yeah, I'm sorry to hear. We that, were furloughed as well. Yeah, you? yeah. yeah. Man, but, but it was just I think that was just the norm because the, all the clubs got together and was sort of like, yeah, well, we're all doing this. That's what we do. Yeah, all in. But you, so during lockdown when the games were were cancelled before it restarted, you got quite into. Well, I guess we say how we met really. Yeah, so we met via Angus. Angus yeah, you and were at Lyft. Why were you at Lyft? Actually, I don't know. I know Angus from like age group rugby at Guildford, like under 18s and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah and um, Lyft is a gym in London in Shoreditch. It's very kind of forward. They're, they're very much into movement. It's called Lyft, but there's no barbells that you lift. It's all body weight, and there's like a lot of there's tons of rings and yeah, it's like holistic progressive yeah they're into frc full range conditioning yeah, yeah. like gymnastics gymnastics stuff. mobility yeah. stuff so that's how i met angus at lift and then so you knew him from rugby i knew him from rugby and then i saw him um roping on um on his uh, social media and I was oh like, so you weren't what even is this black magic yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like oh yeah yeah you should my man uh, my man tim's in bristol you should link up get a training session and try it I was like, okay. Didn't you so do it okay. with him first? No, no, no. Oh, I thought you No, were I at... didn't. Oh, cool. And then I was just like, okay, cool. Then I just dropped you a message. Next minute, we're on North Bristol Rugby Club roping. On the AstroTurf. Yeah. I brought my kettlebell. Just rain dancing. It was amazing. Yeah, we were roping yeah, it was kettlebell. Fun. Yeah. Was that the way of the rope rope or was this even before that? It was way of the yeah. rope rope. Yeah. yeah, it was one of one of these boys. Um, but Make... though you bought one from Octomoves, I think, and it hadn't arrived yet. I bought one from Octomoves thinking it was your, yeah. your company. <laughs> But yeah, I've got that one as well. Yeah, nice. You've got, got a little stash mm. of them. Mate, your rope progress has been strong, by the way. But oh, I, yeah, I've got to say so, that. Um, actually, Max has is, is, come on I'm incredibly. I'm so hooked, so hooked on it. It's just, yeah. And I think there's definitely something to it. It's just too... Because with with um, with pro sport, especially rugby, because it's an impact sport, a lot of it's just force development through like the sagittal plane. Like it's not it's not particularly intuitive. So like... Mm. And I feel you you can see it happening with rugby players over their career. They become like these kind of, they become like sort of fused together by their fascia because all they do is sort of power lift. They're just blocked. And all yeah. they want to do is accelerate, deaccelerate, and create lots of force on collisions. Mm -hmm. And that just creates lots of problems for you later <laughs> on. Yeah. Later on. Yeah. Like, definitely does. Like, I'm, I am. Um, like the the roping has come helped so much with my quality of life in terms of just basics of getting out of bed and putting on socks, oh, for really? example. Just yeah. Man. Stuff, like... Oh man, like just like loosened your back. Or what? Yeah, it's mostly through my thoracic, like, yeah. and my hips. So and obviously your back's just a whole unit. So then my like naturally my neck and all everything else followed with. Mm. And the lumbar, it's, it's just been wonderful. You, and you like used to get shoulders. stingers and you get no stingers. Yeah, no or... stingers. Yeah. How mad's that? Which is like what? I mean, where you get a headache after? It's no, it's like, where you like get. It's where like so my cervical has like a compromised um, facet joint space where the nerve comes out. Okay. And for um, those listening, cervical. That's the yeah, that's just the cervicals like your neck, oh, okay. like the C C four C five that yeah. kind of vibe. Okay. And it's just un unfortunately when you're playing prop. Yeah. You, quite a lot of load goes through the, old, the old pillar. Oh shit! And yeah. um, you just squeeze that disc disc material out for fun. Yeah, it doesn't grow back, unfortunately. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that was a problem. But it, it was just something I had to be used to. And it like there is no pain greater than stinger pain. Yeah, I think it's just so debilitating. Mm -hmm. And then you obviously get neurological issues like numbness in your hands. And yeah, shins. like biceps start atrophying, pec major starts atrophying. It's all quite interesting. Tricep um, and. Uh, yeah, since mate, since the roping and like the lockdown, oh, I haven't had one touch wood. It's yeah. great, man. Yeah.
I noticed with the rope, especially like you said, from playing rugby and doing yeah. powerlifting, just putting so much compression on your spine, yeah, oh. tackling, scrummaging, squatting, all this stuff, you're just compressing that spine. Yeah, exactly. And what I noticed, I was so rigid in my upper body that I had like no rotational core. Mm. And we, when I first started running, it was just, it was so blatant, the progression from starting running, playing with the pulses a little bit, doing the rope, how before I was like running like a robot. Yeah. Oh. And then I've just been able to like loosen up a little bit more. Makes you more yeah. fluid, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent more fluid. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's fun to in, and obviously you, you, Harry as well. Another rugby player has been into the rope, and you've given it. You got it for a friend as well, right? Yeah, I, I send it to my cousin. Yeah, so he's loving it as well. But oh, it's just yeah. It's what a tool from WEC. Um, but so you were doing a lot of lifting during lockdown, right? So you, I was also doing. Was it Alico sent you? Yeah, so Alico sent me some gear, and man, it was so fun. They make good gear. Yeah, such nice yeah. gear. So they sent it you is some quite pricey, but plates, yeah. Oh my god, I got like two hundred and fifty k kilos in a, in a bar, and I just bought some um, a squat rack and some mats. Did I you just need set a few more plates. Garden. Have you maxed out the two fifty? With no, the, uh, just about. Just about I just about got to like rep it with like deads and got a PB okay. out of a squat, but that was it. But I was pretty happy with that. That was massive gains. That is insane. So it was so nice to not be running and then be able to just like really Focus. pursue some powerlifting. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, man, like COVID world was wonderful for the gains. <laughs> so you got, like, the, so you got on the rope yeah. and then you got on lifting and it was just That like... was it, bro. And then lots of, lots, I did have to do a fair bit of running, but. Yeah. It was just not the same as the sort of stimulation you get from rugby because all the contacts and stuff take quite a lot out of the like nervous mm. system, so it's not conducive to lifting heavy all the time. Yeah, it's like finding that. Yeah. Can we talk numbers though? What what year? Oh, so like I managed to get a PR in my back squat, which was like two fifty, and then I was <sighs> repping yeah. two fifty for like four or five on the deads. Really? So you're well over 500 pound gold with me. Yes, that was man. cool, man. It was so good. And like now my like now my base level is like so much up from where it was. So yeah. this season, even when I'm like not quite peak on something because yeah. of all the running and stuff, where it was before, it's just so much higher now. It's mm. so yeah. It was such a lovely time to just get into it. I mean, <laughs> it's mad with rugby, right? Because you you play so much throughout the season. <laughs> get to the end of the season, you have a couple of weeks off where you, you fully need to just completely rest to let your body recover. Yeah, exactly. And then what, you get four weeks of training before you get back into rugby? Well, for this next season. Yeah, well, for yeah. this season, you're getting yeah. like barely yeah, anything, no, right? No, no, it's longer. It, like preseason is usually like eight to 12 weeks. Eight to 12 yeah. weeks. So you, you get like a, a block each year where you can yeah. actually do some proper get training. Get some proper training and running, that sort of thing, like injury prevention stuff. Um, but yeah, I've, I found like, because going into the next season, we've only got three weeks off and then we're straight into it. So, but then I, I suppose you could counter argument that that's being like, well, there was COVID lockdown. So everyone got a good rest in that regard. But it's interesting for sure. And during the season, it's basically just like, don't injure yourself in the gym and try and main, you know, yeah. maintain as much so, strength as possible. Oh man, I've, like I'm 30 now. So I've always found this an interesting, like trying to figure out what's best for you as an athlete. The thing with rugby is, it's like a sort of broad stroke of different athletes. And like a lot of the time, the program's sort of the same for everyone. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm not saying like- So they want you to be a certain way. I found that so interesting. Yeah. Yes, is, that, they want, is that true? Yeah. Yeah, like with some things, it, like they, they do monitor everything to see, and they'll like look at your performance according to how much you're weighing, according to your numbers in the gym. Okay. And that kind of, but so it's quite scientific. Yeah, there is, there is definitely some like detail now. Yeah. But I do sometimes find that it's too like, yeah, too broad, you too all in yeah. So you may be doing the same program in the gym as a winger, for example. Uh, maybe not like a winger, but like a back row or something. Yeah. yeah but like, yeah. it's not even just that. It's like how much actual, how much actual stimulation do you need for adaptation? Do you know what I mean? Like as an athlete, are you a, are you like a a fast twitch guy or are you a slow twitch guy? Like some guys need a lot more stimulus to push like adaptation I find than others. Um, and obviously you still have to do all the reps, do all the training it's, and you're trying to figure out that balance and what's best for you as an athlete. So are they managing recovery with like HRV and stuff like that? Uh, they don't really, they don't buy one. Yeah, I've, I've got the whoop. So I'll, I'll monitor in my own HRV, but I don't think because of the nature that it's so many different athletes playing in a team sport, I just think HRV is not like something that they're willing to sort of 
invest in in that regard. So, yeah. Say you wake up, your HRV is like fried. Heart rate variability. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's the only thing I don't like about the whoop. So I'll wake up, it'll be like, you need to rest. Yeah. And then it's like, you got no choice. It's the hardest day of the week. <laughs> <Yeah>. Unlucky. <laughs> you got full yeah. contact, followed by gym, yeah. followed by scrummaging. Prepare to die. And then your head's just fried. You're like, oh my God, oh, I'm yeah. going to die. So, so you've got no leeway to go in and go, oh, actually, guys, my my uh, like tracking device is telling me I um, shouldn't be no, training No, absolutely today. not. No. But what I'm, I'm sort of getting to the point now where because I'm the age I am and I, I do lift like good numbers and that, I sort of have a little bit of clout in regards to like, being able to manipulate my own plan and how much I do and how much little I do, which is nice. But some guys, yeah, they're just, you're in the meat grinder, son. <laughs> Prepare yourself. Well, you get you get some rugby players, right? So <laughs> who just absolutely detest the gym. That You get a lot yeah. of people like that. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, isn't so it? So lockdown would have happened, they would have been like, right, that's it, I'm not training. Hate you putting the, uh, you know, the device which monitors how much you're running, just chuck yeah. that on the dog, kick him out into yeah. the garden. <laughs> Absolutely. See yeah. you later. Some guys were like in like obviously everything was optional in um Corona world. You just know so many guys weren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. A few guys came back about ten kilos heavier, looking <laughs> large and in charge, <laughs> but not in the good way. Yeah. But I, um I seen you um filmed was it for BT Sport? Oh yeah, yeah. That was like that a, was a cool piece. Yeah. So you like vlogged the day and sent them the footage. Yeah. And they made an edit. And they just made an edit out of it. And that was that was so much fun actually. That yeah. was really but cool. that's like no, that's one of the greatest things about rugby actually is that social element, like the companionship of all these different sort of eclectic personalities, especially at Bristol. Like there's a lot of different sort of backgrounds. Yeah. And it's all very sort of... Um, go to war together. Yeah, like, exactly. But everyone, of, yeah. yeah, but like everyone's so no, like nice. Sometimes you go to clubs and there's definitely like little camps, whereas mm. I find at Bristol it's all very like as one. Oh, cohesive that's yeah, yeah it's wonderful that's yeah. awesome i think what helps as well because speaking to harry about the same thing he said like being down in exeter because all the boys you can jump in the car go to anyone's house you're in like a small pocket of the country yeah. mm. so it's easy to socialize outside of rugby mm. was it like, if you're in a london club like oh, sarah yeah. say whatever people are all over the place oh, yeah it's a pain in the ass to drive you're around. not really hanging out yeah so yeah. It's, like, it's harder to have that social side with exeter you hear funny stories yeah it's a very <laughs> spartan culture <laughs> Homoerotic yeah. banter everywhere, that kind of vibe. <laughs> Horror stories, initiations, yeah. oh, that really? kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I'm, 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 this is Chinese whispers, okay. extra lands. Don't, don't Can't read say Chinese it. whispers. Yeah. I use that. Is that PI? <laughs> God damn. Uh, this yeah. is the world we live in now. Cancel culture. Yeah. Um, so you're quite a movie buff. I dabble. You dabble. You yeah. make some really good reviews on your Instagram. Just share your Instagram for people real quick. Was it at Max Laheef? Uh, Laheef Max, Laheef. at Laheef Max, yeah. L A H I double F. I, I'm double F as well. We should. Yeah, know. yeah. I've never met a double F yeah. surname before. Not that means much, but do you ever say Foxtrot, Foxtrot? When you're spelling your no, name, no, I don't. I but now, I, now I will. That Foxtrot, sounds Foxtrot. so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> S H I double F. And they're like, is that S? I'm a Foxtrot. Foxtrot. Yeah. They know what you're saying. Yeah. Foxtrot, Foxtrot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yeah, you you recently did Jerry Maguire. What? So let's. What could you name me like your top three movies of all time? If that's oh, that, or just like a it's few. always like different, but. I'd I say like the most sort of memorable, most influential movies on me would be like, I don't know, Jurassic Park. Yeah. Gladiator. Yeah. It could be like between uh, probably Snatch. Jerry Maguire would yeah. be in there as well. Terminator 2 you seem to really like. Termin yeah, but Terminator 2 is just like, that's just like fast food for your brain, you know I mean? <laughs> for your eyes. Like that's, that's just a fun fun movie yeah yeah that chase scene is probably one of my favorite movie scenes of all yeah. time it's think. just outrageous arnold schwarzenegger in, in his pomp yeah yeah i feel like you got to put like even though it's comedy but dumb and dumber is just like one of the like yeah dumb when and dumb is very like, good films like jurassic park dumb and dumb is like up there but then like leon or something like that leon very good yeah, yeah I mean, jean renault natalie paul oh great film incredible film yeah that is. very good film anything else like that on the fringe um, like some John Travolta, some like classic John Travolta. That's like, what's the one where he just gets some aliens like inject his brain with the truth or something? And he's like, that I forget the name of it. Oh, There's I don't just know some that. amazing like that? 80s and 90s films. Like Contact is incredible. And people oh, are yeah, Matthew McConaughey. Good. Like that's just so oh, yeah. epic. And it's like this dilemma of the Earth getting the first sign of life from another planet. And it's the science versus the religion. Who like what angle? Yeah. You know what do we with, um, Amy, uh, Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, th these films are so lost. Like, yeah, no, but people want different stuff now, don't they? But now, there's no, 
the movies just aren't the same anymore because it's all one. There's an agenda with all the movies. You can sense like there's so much agenda. There's no like um, <laughs> yeah, there's, but there's no like private uh, like what do you call it like independent films that yeah, make no, it I big agree. anymore. Yeah. It's all it's, it, that's true. It's all regurgitating Gun- Guardians of the Galaxies and all this stuff. And it's yeah, just it's like, and quite com- yeah, it's quite cheap. But the same process it's so stuff. cheap process, yeah. man. There's no. I know what you mean. There's no soul. Like you can sense it when you're into movies. Like, ooh, yeah, no I know what you're saying. There's, it's not like an art. It's not like it's a not craft art. anymore. It used to be. Yeah. Art. Yeah. It used to be quite. Yeah. Saying that though, is there anything that you've seen recently? Recently. Um, Did you say Parasite was really? Or was that someone else? Was saying? That's good. That someone is told good. Me that the other day. That is yeah. good. Ridiculous. Parents. I watched it. That's yeah. an interesting documentary on like economics and the class system and stuff. It's yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Is it subtitled? Um, the whole thing subtitled. Yeah. Korean movie. Yeah. Very good. It's gonna um, be a hard sell for Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't mind subtitles. Quite like I didn't. Yeah. Um, I watch subtitles if I'm not doing anything else. But if I Helen, like, yeah. Helen High Water is good actually Helen with um, Jeff Bridges and uh, Chris Pine. Okay, that's a good one. It's sort of like a contemporary western about bank robbers. Very good yeah. film. Yeah. Cult of War soundtrack. Oh. What's oh. next on the reviewing? So, uh, uh, um, I wasn't sure. I might do. Um, I don't know. I might do something really out there. Have you ever watched um, Nocturnal Animals? I have. Amy Adams. Oh my god, that will rock you to your core. That movie. Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal and that. Oh, yeah. that film messes you. You're like, wow, this is dark. Yeah, <laughs> but it's definitely worth a watch. It'll just make you sort of confront yourself a little bit. Okay. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you've got the whoop on. Is there anything else you're on these like exploring, um, you know, I'm health doing that, biomechanics? Um, that breathwork one. What's okay. it called? It's the state app. The state. Yeah, I really enjoy that. Oh, yeah, that, on I just it. like the, I like the wake up one. Mm-hmm. Super trippy. So what, it's <laughs> gets an app? You, gets it's you bubbling. App. Yeah, breathwork app and it just gets you, yeah, it gets you high on your own supply. It's wonderful. It's like a aperitif Wim Hof sesh really, isn't it? Yeah, it's a guy called Brian McKenzie. Like trains a lot. Of oh, is that Brian McKenzie's app? Yeah. It's oh, his, yeah. that's interesting. He's the guy who wrote that. Um, the oxygen. What's it called? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote, wrote that, didn't he? Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the app has just got four sort of breathwork sessions a day. There's yeah. a wake up. There's a calm. There's a sleep one, and the other ones maybe feel feel alert. No. Oh, feel alert! Yeah, it's yeah. Called yeah. Just state, the state. It's called like, state. Yeah. Like I'm coffee. gonna check that. I wanna. Yeah. Bro, the, the 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 yeah, the feel alert one. Oof. Yeah, it's addictive. That it one. It gets you going in the morning. Yeah. And it's like it asks for feedback at the end of every session. So it's like, how are you feeling? Was that easy? Was it hard? Was it the right? It and like then it adjusts it depending numbers. on your ability. Mm. But what I've noticed is, say I have like a, a day where my stress is high. I got a lot of work, hit a gym session, or whatever. Similar to the how the HRV, you can see where you're at when you wake up in the morning. I'll do that app. Some days I'll breeze through the session and some days I'll wake up and I won't be able to do the session and I know yeah. that I'm like, you know, I'm not operating on full capacity when I can't do the breath work. Yeah, so it's a real good gauge. Like a natural HRV. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Sort of yeah. Well, you, I've seen you like writing with both hands at the same time. Oh yeah, that's fun. So that's a guy called Brian Lavery. It's called Full Brain Power. I'm not sure what it's about, but like, during lockdown, I was like, I'm just going to get into some kind of cursive you like, writing. You like juggling with heavy board? And juggling, yeah. yeah. So, so you're doing cursive writing and you, are you mirroring? Or you yeah, so you basically, well, you start off essentially with a journal and you just write, you write something on the right page and then you write something on the left just to start off. And it, like over about, it took me about 28 days to get it sort of decent enough where it's legible. At the same time. Before it was like, oh my God, it's a five-year-old like drawing on the back of a galloping camel. I was like, what is going on here? But um, it was, uh, it's, there's some interesting science there. I'm not sure if it's like woo woo, yeah, but like, it's so addictive. So I'm like, there must be something to it. And um, I just enjoy like a little bit of a rant as well. So writing yeah. it out. So, so you're writing your journal. So you write whatever comes to your head with your right hand. And yeah. you try. And so then you just, and then you eventually just Eventually the aim it. is to mirror it. And then the, eventually the aim is to be able to just do it at the same time. Write both at the same time. Go yeah, but yeah. The, <laughs> the most difficult thing about it is that is where you're looking. Because obviously when you write, you're sort of looking where the pen is. Yeah. But when you're writing, with, you've got to have this like 100 yard stare and just be like back yourself with the left. The right, <laughs> he'll take care of himself. But the really left. small pieces of paper. Yeah, you're like, take my strong hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the beginning, your hand's so useless that the pen's just like 
your hand slowly slipping down the pen. Oh, oh it's so niggly. <laughs> the lip. But you get there. What's yeah. that supposed to do in terms of like brain training? Well, it's like, it's all about like a motor skill activation. Like, so if you, so essentially the theory is if you can, if you learn something on your left hand, um, the next time you do it on your right, it'll be like immensely easier. And I find that it's, the rope is kind of, it's the same. Yeah. It's yeah. the same like hemisphere, same with juggling. Yeah. And with um with the pen, it's interesting because when you write with the left, like for a while, and it's getting really nice and pretty. The minute you go to your right, it's like a mate is like infinitely better. Like oh, it's fifty percent cool. like faster and just steadier. But, so because you improve it on that left side, it makes the run. that's mm, really yeah, non dominant side training. Yeah, Have you noticed any crossover? Say like as your passing um, got any better off your back hand? Sport, or? Yeah, I haven't really. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna go out there and be like, yeah, it's a goddamn game changer, but. Um, it's definitely made me like, um, just generally a bit like, I don't, I'm not sure if it's just myself who's sort of figuring stuff like in myself out a bit more, but since I've been doing all that stuff, I just feel a lot more energetic and motivated to learn new things. Mm-hmm. Um, but that could just be a, a symptom rather than the actual <laughs> thing. But, um, does the person that kind of created it yeah that's, that's what he's side. that's what he says is a side effect okay, of it cool. it's like you be you become a lot more like what was his name the guy brian lavery and what's the name of it it's called the whole brain power it's the whole brain it's power. out there it's it's fun though i really enjoy it and the ham the hammer ball taps as well so you get like a golf ball and like a rubber mallet, a mallet. and you're just tapping that's what you're doing yeah yeah that's fun as well and you try that with your left hand as well and then you do it with your left and then you go back to your right and your right's amazing and then slowly your so left so you're just doing keepy with the mallet yeah. with the golf ball yeah with the golf ball and then eventually you can change to like a claw hammer and you should see him do it it's nuts and then there's yeah. this other guy I forget his name he's like a mad handball player in America plays for the American team and he's like a prodigy at all this stuff um and he like vouches by it, but yeah. it's just more, it's more I'm just. I'm gonna look addictive. into that now. Yeah, no, yeah. check it out. But it's super addictive, man. Yeah. When you gave me the hand before, I was just like, no, yeah, you like, don't want to give it to anyone else. And it's just really mindful. Like that's another thing about all these things. It's just you can't. There's no real space for you to like your for your mind to go elsewhere. Yeah, you're and so focused so, on the task. Oh, and like in life now, I find it so difficult to like be focused on stuff <laughs> as much mm-hmm. because of like phones and just yeah. this sort of. Yeah. like pouring of stimulation instant, in, instant, yeah the- instant gratification experience everywhere yeah. so you're just, you just overstimulated and you just you can even see yourself doing it on your phone you're like just going in circuits around the same things and you're like it what? calls to you doesn't it like you yeah put it you're on like side what is going like, on pick yeah. me up we have yeah. no, we have, pick me up just check what? me yeah just check me <laughs> i just, it's just what's going on there to me Nothing. it's like we have no i call it like like um the ability to sit at the bus stop like when you were younger and you used to get the bus you used to sit at the bus stop and you just weren't you just had to wait and that moment yeah. of waiting mm-hmm. made it when you got to your destination subliminally you felt in my eyes you, you felt better when you arrived because you've been in that moment of doing nothing whereas when you're constantly occupied there's no down moment to make the up moment even better yeah you know I mean? yeah, like yeah just, i get you just don't I, have that ability yeah. to like like there's no there's no like entropy to life now. yeah everyone wants it's to be up everyone wants to have it, like yeah. stimulants in them and doing stuff and on the phone and checking the apps and being social and comparing their life to other people's. And what's my highlight? Oh, it's just yeah. mad. But yeah, yeah that's why I love those sort of things because you're so in it yeah. and you're just so consumed Kendama. by the task. Have you come across Ken uh, no. They're kind of similar. It's like the ball and the cup, but it's like... Oh, it's like... This, oh, yeah, no, I've, see, I've seen got, that. I've, I've tried it, but I've yeah, seen them, yeah. That got really big in the parkour community yeah. where people were loving them and the, the bottle flip. That, that was quite the fun. Bottle flip. The yeah. bottle flip. Yeah. <laughs> Huge. Um, what's your what's your diet like then? Um, quite so like, uh, I'm pretty like. What do you weigh as well? Actually, while we're right now, I'm like one thirteen. Cool. I could be a bit heavier, but six foot? I'm enjoying. Yeah, like six one. But six I'm enjoying foot. being um, a lot leaner. But like, yeah. my um, I started off in rugby. I was like a quite an undersized player. Like especially as an academy player, I was like 102 kilos, 103, and I just hyper loaded on calories i was just eating everything and anything because that's what i was told to do Josh, and i story. Right. i used yeah. to get up i remember speaking to my s and c coach and asking him how i could put on weight and he advised me to get up at 4 a.m and drink a mass gainer oh, so i used to make a mass gainer before bed put it by the side my bedside table 4 a.m alarm go off down it go back to sleep and then knowing what i know now about like circadian rhythm the stomach yeah, and all that horrendous, isn't just it? so stupid <laughs> yeah but yeah i did that for about a year oh <laughs> it's so peak like You'd go, I'd like 
as rugby players do, you sort of live together, head off to like Nando's or somewhere and just consume everything, like yeah. sit in, belt in for two chickens yeah. and the set and the rest and then all the other rest all those other kind of restaurants you go and eat two for one vouchers, you're just eating everything. Yeah. It was horrendous, man. I have no idea the kind of lifespan ending <laughs> consumption I did to myself. You carried then. on like that. But yeah. So now was, if you shift But now, yeah, like now I'm um now it's very, very different. Like I intuitively eat a lot better. I mean, I sort of know when I'm under or over uh, what I should be eating. But for the most part, um, my appetite's very much moderated by how much I work. Mm. So like, I'm quite lucky in that regard. Like I don't, I don't um, overeat or for the mo- like for the most part. Well, so, then what you have to do to that. Yeah, yeah, and I quite like not eating in the morning and like eating very little before training. And then after training, I'll just, Ravenous. Hyper load. What do they call it? Beast, feast, fast. Yeah. Uh, someone said that. I thought that was quite a good way of living. It's like fast, so you're fat, coming in faster. Yeah. Beast. Yeah, that's and then me. Feast. That would yeah. be me. That's exactly how I eat. Yeah. Feast, fast, yeah. And then the sort of things I eat are oh, very, very simple. Like, I love cooking, so I'll. So you're eat, making some like yeah. spatchcock chickens or something? Yeah, like I'll that. eat. Yeah, that's more, that's sort of more holistic, but I love eating like big, sort of processed carbohydrate pastry amazing italian food as well but yeah. when for the most part carbonara? i'm always eating like lasagna? rice and meat rice salad yeah. oh yeah carbon carbonara the, i love carbonara sweaty lasagnas yeah big got, also, big meat mixed meat ragus just with like really thick ribbon parpadelli pasta oh good god <laughs> seductive yeah. so quite vertical you say rice and meat yeah for the most part like if i want if i was like if i like to like feel good yeah. i would eat just like that like lots of like vegetables like mostly root. i'm not that big on cruciferous but i quite like root vegetables yeah. like be, be true maybe. yeah whatever yeah. like i love smashing those in like low like really low glycemic sort of value veggies loads of rice and just like good produce like meat fish a little bit of poultry um yeah no when do i make last uh no that was a um yeah bone to chicken so something like that with like a fresh chimichurri rice boom happy days do you know what i mean and then you can like smuggle things into like those relishes like some potent sort of veggies like nitrates from beetroot and turmeric that kind of thing mm-hmm. so you're quite um, conscious of like micronutrient covering your microbes yeah i try and cover stuff. like I, I think that's valuable like you want to get as much as you can from your food rather than supplementation i find um, I saw you smashing the oysters the other day as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. off your recommendation. Went Nature's down there. Oh, they were delicious. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going to do that. There. Yeah, I just made like, I didn't have any Tabasco, but I made, yeah, essentially something quite similar. And it was so wonderful. They're very good. Where'd you get them from? That was a, uh, what's it called? Uh, Clifton. Clifton Lewis, you recommended this to me. Clifton's. Clifton's yeah, Clif- Clif- yeah. But it's weird because it's on Wapping Wharf, so, but it's cool. And we've got a few up there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's wonderful. Really good stuff. Yeah. And where'd you get your meat and from? I got some, Is that and I got, and man, and I made that poke bowl from the sushi tuna they had. Okay. So I made like a really nice poke bowl off the back of that with like a load of jasmine rice. Yeah. Oh my god, that's that it. Was sounds good. Unbelievable. Love a poke bowl. Oh, it was outrageous. Yeah. Mate, we need yeah. to sort out a meal. The tuna where, uh, was just so like. Oh, yeah, we need to eat oh, together. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So keen. Yeah. We need to get you and Mo together as well. We have got another friend who's like obsessed with cooking. Oh yeah, yeah I've seen some of his stuff He's, on your story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Yeah, that yeah. does look saliva and yeah. juicing yeah <laughs> yeah um so bristol got a big game tonight eh yeah man um big game we've got uh bordeaux begler semi rodrages yeah. old team in that heineken cup the in formerly the, heineken cup in in the the, the fisher price challenge cup no not quite fisher price at this stage <laughs> you've got some big dogs swimming around but um yeah yeah it's not it's not with the big boys like um exeter and sarries playing um to what's, lose what's and the name of the there's that there's is the um European Cup. Champions Cup okay. and ours is the Challenge Cup, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good God, the names are yeah. always changing. And, uh, I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, that's that's, a, that's essentially what's happening. But yeah, you, so this game we've got is... And then the other team is... Who's it? Leicester versus... Um, oh, I've forgotten who they're playing. But yeah, so if we beat them, we're into four. the final. Yeah, last yeah. four. I just learned this year that rugby isn't like football with the Premier League, whoever's the top of the league table when the season ends wins. No. Yeah. You, you get to the end of the league table. Top four. Everyone plays everyone twice. Top yeah. four have a playoff. Playoffs and the, then to the final, yeah. And then the winner of that wins the league. Yeah, Which bro. is like merging two worlds at once. Yeah. And you're sat right in the bubble right now, aren't you? 
Uh, yeah, we're in. We're just outside of it, but we've got two games that we should get all the points from. Okay. If if you were the there's book, literally like if, two if or three games left in the season. Right? Yeah, two games left, and the book would be like, yeah, Bristol should get all their points from those games, but... and someone else might not. There's like Sale and, and then Le- um, Leicester, is it or Sale? Yeah, Sale. Have, I think Bath have made it. Mm. If they beat Saris away, it's a big oh, it's all it's all happening. Yeah. It's all very spicy at the top. So who's in the top four? Is Chiefs, Chiefs, Sale, Sale Bath, and um, then we're just outside the pack. But if you go on the two games we've got to get in hand, like coming up, we should be in the mixer. And the, with the playoffs, do they do first versus fourth or first yeah. versus third? Yeah. Okay, nice. And uh, predictions for this weekend? Um, yeah, I'm Wait, gonna for, go with um, for rugby or fighting. We well, we could do both, but first rugby. of all, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, okay, extra, so extra playing to lose tomorrow three o'clock. I don't know. That's a tough one, man. It's a big game. That's it. It's at Exeter, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, Sandy Park. Okay, I'm gonna go with Exeter. Oh, it's tough <laughs> though. <laughs> to lose, the, looked, I think this is the first I've ever watched got. Ulster. Oh, it looked horrible. I felt really bad for uh, Ches and Colby was like untouchable. You see him? It's like the Teflon. Dog. I didn't watch that game, but he's just a joke. Oh apparently. man, it's weird. He's like Mighty Mouse. He's just like, how is he so dynamic for being that tiny? What's the other game? Bro, he threw a bloke on his backside, oh, really? bro, like a back row. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> this is mental. You can run around him. Don't run through him, bruv. Yeah, he's crazy explosive. Yeah, a mental. And then... Um, so you're going for Exeter? I got Exeter there. Okay, cool. And then for Racing versus um, Saris, I think I'm going to go with Saris. And that would set up the final? Or that and that would be so set be up the Chief, final. So it would be Chiefs, Saris, British, are you I think, it'll be, I think it'll be, I think it'll be, yeah, Brit on Brit action. And those two love each other. Nah, yeah, it'd be a yeah. very spicy encounter. Yeah, that would yeah. be ridiculous. Be cool. Because obviously Saracens have gone, are going down next year because of the yeah, whole so point all scandal. Their, all their conviction is all their like emotional intent will just be focused on these games. And if they beat Exeter and then Exeter win the league, they can just go out with the the moral high ground, can't they? They can be like, no, we're still the champs. Yeah, 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 because they beat them and, in the final of that. And wow. we've now, we're now complying with the salary cap. What salary cap, you say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if they win, will they Says get the back into player. that comp- competition next year? Is that a thing? Like if you oh, win, you I get back know, in? actually. So they could be in the league below, but they could be playing could be in the... Playing the cup, yeah. Oh, I don't know. That's a good point. That is interesting. Maybe they're an outlier, yeah. Mm. Right, okay, and then fights now. So, yeah, yeah, so you're, you're, you're a bit of a UFC fan? Yeah, I dabble. Just you a little armchair. Yeah. I do enjoy it a lot. Yeah. I reckon I've got... Bro, I don't so by the time this goes out, it, we will know, so we can either laugh at you or whatever. But... Yeah, yeah. What do you reckon? I reckon... Adesanya Costa is so hard to call. It's so hard it's, to call. It's, so, it's the matchup. Though. Adesanya is the easiest thing to say, but co- when you watch Costa's fights, he just comes. Goes he, in. Yeah. It's the Matador versus the Bull. It's going to be it so is. good. It's going to be so it good. Is. I reckon they hate it's each other. Costa's well. smarter than a bull. That's the only difference here. Do you reckon he's got a good fight IQ? I do. I think he's smarter than he, he looks like he did. I, yeah. I think he's way more calculated than it looks. He's like Geishi. It looks oh, like yeah. reckless, but he's but like, it's not. He's, he's like figuring stuff out. Yeah, okay. his power, and yet he doesn't gas out. I know he's only gone three rounds before. Everyone just says he's on juice, don't they? Yeah, but, but the South Americans do love a little bit of the old vitamins. So be H-G-N-H. it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great like Adesanya says. It's the skinny guy versus the bodybuilder. What do you reckon in terms of his gas tank for four and five? Because he's never been there. That's like a big question mark. He might not fight. go there if Izzy like because Gastelum, Gastelum pushed Izzy. And I think Costa can push Izzy more than Gastelum can. Like, when yeah, you look, that, you was, think that, that fight, was a and good the, fight. The Marvin Vittori fight when Adesanya was on the rise, that was the closest fight he's had. That was a split decision. And Vittori was very much built like Costa. Okay, I'm going Costa, I'm going Costa. That's a, you sold it. Also, yeah. I want Costa as well. <laughs> I'm still going all, I'm all, all, Costa. All, all, for, all for the Jack guys. Yeah. <laughs> I like them both. Team man. Jack. I like them both. Yeah, you know, I like both of them. I love Izzy as well. I'm going to pick Izzy, just I think his IQ is, is just actually just too much. But I just think it's going to be an incredible fight. Yeah, so. I'm going Izzy Also, well, doesn't Costa have like a sweet, sweet chin? He's got a good chin and his coach is the one, is, is um, the same coach as from Henry Cejudo. And he's, even though I, the guy is so cringe, king of cringe. Oh, he's paying for Triple oh, it's C. it's awful to watch. I, he's still, it's awful to watch. He still impresses me so much when oh, he fights. Oh, he's sick. He's he, so good. And yeah. he, coming from wrestling to actually have such good stand-up and fight IQ. And he's got the same coaches from him to Costa I think he's actually got the best team around him he could have 
to, to make him be the best he could be. So it's yeah. it's a tight one. But I just think Izzy, Izzy's camp as well is incredible and they've all like lived together for this camp. Um, so the co-main is another title fight. It's, wait, the, the, so just a fact, the, the main event is the, only the second time in history where two people have fought for a title, both undefeated. And it's a, and it's a someone has the belt and one's a challenger. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I'm going to go with Reyes. So for the co, so for the co-main, it, it's sorry, that was for the main event. That's so the, that's the main. We're the main go, we're co-main, co- yeah, you're going yeah, Reyes. I'm going Reyes. He looked impressive against John Jones. He's he, not really. He looked very good against John Jones. The fight before Jones was that the one where he didn't look good. He fought Uzdemir, two fights before Jones, I think, and that he didn't look good at there all. There was one that was awful, yeah, but yeah, I, that was Uzdemir yeah. in London on the Masvidal till yeah, card. Yeah, yeah. But then he did fight. On the McGregor Khabib card, I think it was, and he looked amazing. So he is, he's the best athlete, isn't he? He's like, yeah, he's a freak. He's, he's a good athlete. He's great to watch. Um, but I think Blackovich is such a dark horse. So it's so hard to pick against him. So I don't know. What do you think, Josh? It's a big Yan. Going for the pole. In this you go for the pole. Yeah. The, big, the, the pole yeah. skin. The underdog. Yeah. He probably I just isn't. think he's got that like grit. He might just come in and just like refuse to lose. Yep. I can oh, definitely oh, see oh. that. I think yeah, I'm. Be good. I'm just leaning Reyes. I'm just leaning Reyes. Yeah, I'm really. I'm, I, I, yeah. But it's it's gonna be good. I think I wasn't excited for that fight, and then last night in bed, I was like, I'm actually excited for that fight. No, it'll be good. It, it could, could be, be an absolute bomb. I know what you though. mean. Though. It's be. a bit of a, They've like, both got like fighting for an empty belt. Yeah, know? that's always a bit. They're gonna show up. I think. Yeah. No, no, no. They'll be like. Yeah. They'll be at the bit, but yeah, I know what you mean. It's a shame we don't get to see Jones back in there, but. Yeah, but it's hopefully it lights a flame under his ass, and then you obviously you've got Costa Adesanya. One of them could go. I want to step up to the heavy, light heavyweight because that division has not got Jones I think anymore. Could, especially Costa, man, he's Costa, so big. Costa, hundred percent, and is, would make it easy. Yeah, and is is the winner of this fight just holding the belt until Chimaev gets it? Uh, mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> they've had a bit the, back and forth, haven't they? Adesanya already. And Chimaev, he called him. Yeah. He called him like a rat. Yeah, he did call him rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, Chimaev, man, what that we just it's hard not to mention him, but like, what an impressive guy, just knocked out. I mean, Gerald is the weeks. biggest task. He's so he's they're, they're saying he's got if yeah, the last one wasn't yeah by the way he's got Dana White's confirmed he's got a five round fight booked Chimaev's next fight is five rounds because they're getting him ready for a title shot so it's not Damian Meyer because that, that he, was no, chat, there was that, there that is chat, Damian Meyer's I think that's still booked in October but they're trying to get him a fight on Fight Island before the Meyer fight which is a five rounder so that he can um, get prepped. They're just eyeing him up. So he's confirmed that, but he's not said what weight yet. So it's probably should be well to weight, but. He's a scary dude. Like, yeah, petrified. Scary. It's a rare moment. Is it is on the rise like that? Um, anyone, has you got a favorite fighter? Or a, a favorite fighter? Could be female. Um, Shevchenko or someone or like. Who's my favorite fighter? Uh, I don't know. Actually. Shango McGregor, if you, if you, I'm wearing my McGregor t shirt. Nah, I'm not. He's fun, but he's definitely yeah. not my favorite. I guess I really, I always enjoyed watching. Um, I kind of liked Tim Kennedy for a bit, but yeah. last he was around, he was fun. He got he a bit weird with the, the Nazis then he got stuff. weird with the patriotism. Yeah, yeah, the patriotism is got a bit too far. Sad. And I was he like, does oh. all the brain training stuff. Interestingly, yeah. he does all that shit. No, no, he's not done the heart training though, is he? He's Sorry, not done much heart training. Heart training? What do you mean? <laughs> That's just been like the patriotism is always yeah. a bit like spirit. Like there's no Bro, spirituality in patriotism. Right? It's weird how he just drops it in all the time. Like when I see a when I see a war plane going by, like he'll talk about that. I wish mm. I was in there all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, just out of any just out of any kind of context, you're like you're twist right. it back to there. Yeah. yeah, he's missing that. Um, uh, but no, I love. It's hard not to like Habib. I love yeah. that guy. Yeah, big fight coming up in a month. I just find him so funny. We'll have to try he's and watch that really one together. Entertaining as well. Yeah, keen. Yeah, but I just find him like very entertaining. And is he winning that? Yeah. Case. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard yeah. not to pick him. Though. I mean, I, I just feel like Gage. Yeah, I just. I know Gage is a sick wrestler, but I think it's different when you have to wrestle that guy. Mm-hmm. Everyone's once if you're getting to the to fight Habib, you're always going to be a good wrestler. It's, you're going to be good on the ground. You're going to be a well-rounded fighter. Poirier was a well-rounded fighter. And the minute you get in there, it's yeah. like being in a kind of tumble drive with a load of cactuses. You have no <laughs> idea what you're doing. You're yeah. like, what has just happened? Yeah. <laughs> My, yeah. Like you just realize the level and you're mm-hmm. like, oh. He's got a different attitude to everyone else at like Gaethje. The way he, yeah, I really I like the way he Gage, talks. Yeah, Gaethje's he's like. He's very honest with himself about everything. Yeah. Like, beyond what others are. No, um, I know what you mean. It's very, there's a lot of humility there. You know? Is there any like strange sports that you like? 
Like, what's that one in, in like, Japan? Oh, uh, Japan. Yeah. yeah. Look, if, if that is on, though, I'll watch that. I'm like, You've watched this it. I've never is really fascinating. Watched. It's on Eurosports we every now and again. We could make a Jibadi team. Like, what, oh, you doing, when you're done with rugby. Jib- what is the rules again? I can't remember. You have to touch a you guy to on the other side the other and side. then run back over to your, but you have to hold your breath the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it's a contact sport. You say Jibadi, like, Jibadi, Jibadi, Jibadi. Like, there's a line. Well, the middle, it's a nut sport. There's seven on each side. Sounds ridiculous. No, the guys look like athletes as well. Oh, the Warriors. You cross the line, have to touch someone and get back. But if you touch someone, you. then they can deck you or something. If you don't make it back, then they, then they take you. So Where's you, this from? What kind of India, India, India is oh, a mad yeah. sport. It's but as soon as you touch someone, sport. then they swarm you and jump yeah. on you to stop you and getting back just, over your you line. You get dogpiled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts, mate. It's a cool sport. I thought you might. <laughs> but you know, I was looking at, I was like looking at the athletes. I was like, these guys are legit. They're oh, lifting, yeah. bruv. Yeah. There's these a, guys are doing resistance training. Look at the getaway sticks on them. Yeah. They like the way they snap around as well. Yeah. And they're like going for single leg takedowns. Yeah. It's a cool sport. Anything else? Uh, that's a, that's good from you. I do I do enjoy that one. Um, <laughs> any other weird ones? Uh, I tell you what, I watched the the Highland Games docu on uh, Netflix. Netflix. So good, man. Is that part oh. of the series? It's one episode. Yeah, one of the episodes. The, of the series. away home game. Home oh uh, yeah, that one. Um, did you watch the Calcio store at the Cal- in Italy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I really want to go and watch that. <laughs> Mate, that would make a good stag do. What's the name of that show? Uh, uh, the home. home games or something yeah maybe home yeah. games home yeah. games yeah yeah sick like that ca- where is it in Florence yeah oh and it's just basically God. a war right they kick oh, they shit out of each other up, yeah. it's just MMA meets rugby yeah. yeah it's mental and those guys like live for it all year one yeah. game oh no they but you can see they all look like ex-cons bro yeah, yeah they all look, yeah. But they, then like but they're dressed up in these like, like Italian aristocracy like trousers and stuff and you're like what's this yeah. what is going on here have you watched My Octopus Teacher no, I wanted to watch that. That's what I Where'd you ready? Where'd you I ready, wanted bro? to see that. You that like, looked you'll appreciate fascinating. That. Yeah, you, were you really heard that uh, that theory on uh, biologists have that octopus are like the most advanced. It came down from meteorites. They're, oh, not, really? they're not like they didn't evolve organically on Earth. I don't know how they discover that. I yeah, just, neither do I. But, but I just thought it was quite interesting. No, that is interesting yeah. that they say that. I but there's like a li- there's like some kind of actual literature on that. When you like, watch the thing, you're like, "There's nice. some intelligence in octopi beyond what you'd ever expect." I've seen them, they can squeeze through those tiny little gaps. It's oh, fascinating you know, watching. Yeah, yeah like and that. they like like plop Ch- themselves out of like water and use the deck to like yeah. wash themselves off the boats and stuff. Oh, it's nuts. Yeah. And the suction cups are really... But I know, yeah. I'd say there's another sport I like watching is that medieval night fighting league. You know, <laughs> those it. lads. <laughs> it's like, basically like actual lair. So live action role play, but they're in plate mail shit and like everything. And they basically have blunt weapons like pole axes and stuff. Uh, and they just beat the shit <laughs> out of each other. And it is fascinating to watch. But then I like looked at this guy who was like a historical weapons expert. He was like, absolutely not. This is not how it'd be. I'd be like... Are you sure, pal? This looks like, it looks pretty close to it, but apparently it's not the case. But the guys are just uppercutting each other with like bucklers and just these blunt short swords. And they're like in full plate mail. It is crazy. No, you can find it just on YouTube. So it's not like they hit, get hit and then they die. You can just keep going. No, no, you basically like tap out, yeah, essentially. But imagine like how much your bell's getting rung, getting twatted by a pole axe on a metal helmet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you imagine with the, the CTE metal, you're yeah, like yeah. getting in trouble. Off. It's yeah. just built to stop you dying. <laughs> yeah, it's literally <laughs> yeah. just to stop you from getting a brain hemorrhage. Yeah, but yeah. But it's still going to mess you up. Um, so that's cool. That's interesting. Cool, man. All right. I think we'll wrap there. But macabre. Lovely yeah. chat. Good times. Great times. Yeah. Appreciate you coming Absolute on, bro. Absolute honour. Absolute yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Second guest ever, Max oh. Lahif. Where can they find you? Uh, well, you can find me at Bristol Bears. There you go. Come, come watch. Come, di- come down to Ashton Gate and have a gander. And then at, <laughs> in at 2025. Max, in, yeah, <laughs> yeah. in 2025 when I've retired. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, come down to, um, oh, so I'm on Instagram at um, Lahif Max. L A H I. And it's basically just me being strange and like movies, food, and some holistic well being stuff. Very entertaining. It's, this is the thing we talked earlier about like how Instagram and you're stuck in this world. Yeah. But then, like, you make it. I know a lot more about you because of that. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's all right. But yeah, that's you, if you use it, you use it artistically and you choose. I don't use it as like an actual social plat. I sort of use it as like a, yeah. an act. Sort You're of, into like movies a and food. Yeah. And you kind it's of more like out. just me just yeah. entertaining people, trying yeah. to entertain people. And then yeah. videos of you 
cleaning 160. Oh, that was a great day out. I wish I'd gone heavier though, because yeah. that 160 felt like a toothpick. Yeah. And I don't know when that day is going to come back round again. You know that? You know what? You should have gone in like with that. that I should have just been yeah. like, Keep get going. the hell out of the way, coach. Kindly leave. I'm going again. I should have just yeah. gone for as much as I could that day because it was you ever you just light. No, he stopped me and I was like, no, no, we'll stop there. I was like, but boss, no, please. No, I no. want to go again. It was so light. Yeah. Mate, uh, if I'd got like, Oh, bro, if I'd got like 170 something, that would have been horrendous. Ridiculous clean. Horrendous. Yeah. Josh, where are you at? Uh, ape underscore nutrition on Instagram. Uh, ape nutrition.co.uk is my website. We've got CBD oil, MCT oil, uh, nootropic mushrooms like lion's mane, cordyceps, keto bars. We had some of the lion's mane today. Oh, was that that my lion's mane? That's your lion's mane with a bit of turkey tail in it. Nice. Uh, and I've got Ooh. a discount code on for the podcast listeners, Rediscovering Human, get you 10% off site wide. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Cool. Mine's at Human Timothy on Instagram and humantimothy.co.uk. For the ropes, we're selling ropes. I'm working on Way of the Rope 3 course right now. I'm editing every day at the moment. It's the joys between cycling and that. I'm just on the computer editing the workout program. There's 11, of ro 11 workouts with the rope. Ooh. Three Tabatas. I don't know whether to call Three it. Three Tabatas? Yeah. Or what, like hard ones? No, you do them, they're fine. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know whether to call it hits or Tabatas, but Tabatas is specifically the four minute one. 20, 20, 20 10. 10 up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I've wrote three Tabatas. There's a running one, a boxing one, and a normal one. Oh, sick. Um, there's two footwork workouts, which I think are, they're the crown jewel for me. Them. And then there's some running workouts. There's a non-dominant side training specific workout in there. Uh, hand speed. Oh, yeah, about, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll send you a yeah, version when it's done. When's that ready? 10th of October is the aim right now. Nice. So 10, 10, 2020. Oh man, I'm excited for um, that. Yeah, but well, that should, yeah, I've been, me and uh, Peter went and filmed that last week and I've been hard in the edit on that. But yeah, we, for all the rope stuff, humantimothy.co.uk, stay tuned for that. Stay tuned on the Instagram. Um, and that's it for this episode. Thanks again to Max. And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Sweet. Bonus.